standing up. One of the covers that you saw. Soft parts, the, the main part, though, I think. Is that the hardest out of the three? Well, usually, yeah. Can you uh, aim at sincere music and make great records and not enjoy yourself? Uh, I think it's very hard. I mean, that's the one lucky thing that I've got going for myself, is that um, I'm pretty much in control of what I do, you know? Which, uh, for most people, something they can't really say, you know? They usually got somebody else telling them what to sing about or say or how to look or what to call yourself, but I've been lucky enough to have chosen what I wanted to do right from the start, you know? Even though other people have tried to thwart me, so that's, uh, that's why I decided really to call my first solo record Billy Idol because it really was, you know, my attempt at uh, freeing myself from a lot of rubbish you can get mixed up in, in the rock and roll world. You know, so uh, it was you, my sort of restart, if you know what I mean. Well, you're obviously to, uh, from England. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you moved to New York City. That's your home now, right? Yeah. What's the big difference? Well, you get, uh, you get mugged by strange people here, and you get beaten up completely in England, but... Uh, by, by people you know, as opposed to strangers? <laughs> no, it's always people you never know, really. <laughs> but uh, the real difference is, is only really in, in that people um, just seem to, well, for me particularly, they just appreciate different types of music, and it's just mm. been um, a matter of time to see when they start to connect with the new stuff that's not just necessarily coming out of England. It's been coming out of America ever since, you know, ever since it started. Now, you were weaned on uh, early rock and roll. Yeah, well, um, apart from that, even the sort of late, late sem early 70s stuff that was happening in the States, Iggy and the Stooges and Velvet Underground, you just had Lou Reed. Right. And, uh, Who were the earlier influences that you had? Well, I guess it was all the early rock and roll stuff. I lived uh, on Long Island for a bit when I was a kid, and uh, maybe I heard a lot of rock and roll there, you know. But in England, when I moved back there, there's a lot of Gene Vincent, Eddie Cochran, and people like that were always big in England, so you couldn't help but be, uh, you know, knocked out by what a heavy significance rock and roll had for kids in England. You know, it wasn't just um, wasn't just picking up a guitar as a toy, really. That's the whole thing. It really was the only way out for a lot of people. You know, out of the you know class structure and stuff in England. But uh, what, I think we proved what structure were you in in England? No, it's really hard to say, really. England's such a messed up place, you know. But I guess I'm just, you know, a pretty ordinary kid, really, you know. Well, you got together with a band, obviously, it's known as Generation X, and you had success with Ready, Set, Go. Yeah. Uh, then you decided, uh, even though it was an exciting time in your life, you decided to leave Generation X. Why? Well, it's Ready, Steady, Go as well, but... Um, well, what really happens in rock and roll groups is that they're only really meant for a short amount of time. They're to last for a short amount of time. And uh, that was really always our, in our intention, was to uh, do it while it was fun. And that's really what I mean by groups lasting only a short amount of time. You know, I think after a certain amount of time, it becomes a chore, or people only do it because, uh, like joining a football team or something, you know, it's like one way of getting easy, easy money and... Uh, you can support the wife and kids. That's, That's not really what rock and roll was about, you know? So um, my, my real aim was only to do music with people that I, you know, had fun doing it with, etc. And, um, you know, when that time came that it wasn't fun anymore, whatever the financial things, it was time to move on, you know? So that's really another reason I came to the States was to free myself from all the sort of trappings that uh, I'd had and uh, sort of attained or whatever in England, you know? You can get kind of um, sort of soft and easy when you get used to any sort of system you're in, you know? So it's kind of great to break away from it completely, just like moving schools or anything, you know? Make a load of new friends, find a load of new people. Uh, you know, I think if you can do it anywhere, you can do it in England, you could do it anywhere, you could do it. So when you left from Generation X, are you saying that it really wasn't hard just to pick up and go? Well, not... Well, it was in terms of the fact that I played with those people for a long time, but not, not in terms of what I wanted to do. You know, I really needed to find some new people, some new impetus. That's why I, I only have ever been in a couple of groups, and Generation X was really the first one. And, um, you know, the whole idea was really to, um, like I said, to almost uh, completely destroy my own background so I could rediscover what I wanted to do, you know? And for me, coming to America was one of the 
one of the ways of solving that because so much of the music I always loved was, me was American. One of the covers that you recorded from the old Tommy James, Money Money. Yeah, well that was exactly the point I was making about, say, coming to America. You know, when I was uh, 14 or 15 or so, that was one of the records we used to take drugs to and things in the um, discos and get out of it on. It was you know, a really heavy drum beat sort of song. And it's just, uh, that's really what I, what I wanted to sort of uh, re-feel, you know, was, was some fun, for God's sake, you know, and it got extremely serious, you know. We got involved with lawyers and all this sort of rubbish, and to be honest, I only wanted to be in a group for fun, you know, or at least try and have fun, you know. So um, I thought, instead of trying to write some crummy song on my own, I just wanted to do somebody else's, you know, and have fun doing it. And that's what me and Keith Forsey have always sort of set out to do. We've never sort of set out with any sort of direct plan or anything of attack. We've just done th things which we always we were interested in that we had fun doing, and it just seems that other people seem to be kind of getting into it too now. You know? Do you uh, think, Billy, that that's one of the problems about the business that people just take it too seriously? <laughs> oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, terribly seriously. Well, what bother what bothers you about the business more than anything? If you had to put your your finger on something immediately. Well, I suppose that it is serious. That's the problem. People do take it seriously, and they do land you with uh, serious things, you know, like finances and stuff. But they're not really the things that I think um, particularly interest audiences and stuff. You know, that's not really what I'm there to say, hey, it costs so much to put this on, you know, because really that's my problem, and that's what I wanted to be in a group for, you know. Well, I'm really interested more in making sure that at least people see some live rock and roll that they can get into these days. That's pretty simple. And, you know, you don't have to be a genius to play. I just think um, that was really why we, we even bothered to get into groups. It was just to create our own entertainment, you know? Make it fun for ourselves, because... Uh, to have a good time. Yeah, you know, I didn't really want to go into massive places all the time and see huge groups that I couldn't feel close to. I really wanted to be near people, or at least, at least read about personalities or people who said things that were interesting. And all those people seem to have gone out of rock and roll. Just seemed to be nobody like that. So, you know, we just started to do it to create our own entertainment. Next minute, there was all these uh, record companies giving us a lot of money and things, but uh, we managed to spend that, so. There's um, a lot of your music, uh, the output that you, you give us reflects on your urban influences. What is it about the city that uh, sort of has you in a trap, so to speak, that you enjoy being in? Well, I guess really that uh, with technology and stuff, I mean, it's very hard to be sort of country boy in England, for instance. I mean, there really isn't much future in farming and stuff. Is there a place that you have not played yet that you would like to? Uh, <laughs> there's plenty of places I've played that I don't want to go back to, but <laughs> I don't know. Most, you know, playing really is such a weird experience. It really is about just what happens wherever you are. It doesn't seem to matter particularly where it is half the time, I think it really is what you're, what you're trying to put over to people, at least what you're trying to be, you know? And as I said, we always want to be straightforward and really say what we think in the most straightforward, simplistic kind of way. I don't really want to bother people with poetry and stuff, you yeah. know? Billy, if I asked you what would you like to see in the future for yourself, what would you say? What, become a poet? Um, <laughs> no, um, well, really, I really would, uh, I really would like to have um, my own bubblegum factory, I think. I'd like to buy out Bazooka Joe or someone and make it taste like it used to when I was oh, a you kid. you better do a lot of concerts to buy that place out. Yeah, it's my aim. Who, I don't want any golf clubs or, you know, anything like that. Will you get tired of what you're doing now, someday? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I guess so, you know. But uh, when I do, I definitely won't be here to talk about it. I won't bother with, with trying to, you know, sort of put myself over onto people when I don't think I should do it. You know, that's really another reason why I came to the States. It was just exactly the same. You know, I really didn't want to get trapped in anything. So um, I could only really sort of spiel out the same stuff in England in terms of what, who I was. So to come here was, was, was to stop that happening, was to make me excited again. And so, I don't know, I guess if I ever got really bored, I'll just go and do it again somewhere, find somewhere else. Or if I really can't make music anymore, or, you know, I'll just go and try and do something else, something I think is good for That's fun. what I would ask you. If, if you left this business tomorrow, what would you choose to do for a living? 
Well, I probably wouldn't have much choice. That's the only problem with doing a job, so... <laughs> what yeah. would you like to do? Um, I don't know, really. I'd like to... I, I don't know, I used to just drive a van some days to make money, and it was really great because you didn't have anybody telling you what to do. So as long as the job entails not having anything to, you know, anybody telling you what to do and you can do what you want, I don't mind. But uh, I have no real desperate ambitions at the moment other than uh, making some great rock and roll and uh, really turning on a lot of people to what I do, you know. It's real simple, you can dance to it, but it still says things for kids for today, you know, so that's really what I want to do at the moment. So I don't, I never look past tomorrow, you know, it's what, what for. One of the covers that you recorded from the old Tommy 